Who the hell is Diane Nash? She's a young woman with the discipline of Gandhi, the determination of Dorothy Day, and the courage of Jesus. In 1961, seven white and six black students boarded two Greyhound buses in Washington, D.C. and headed south. Verbal threats soon turned into violent attacks. The further south the buses traveled, the more dangerous it got. One bus was burned, and then riders on the second bus were attacked viciously when they disembarked in Birmingham. They had to be evacuated for their own protection, and leaders of the movement had to decide whether to stop or whether to continue the campaign. But believing in the power of the principles she'd been taught and experienced, Nash insisted that they continue, supported the students, explaining later that if we allowed the Freedom Rides to stop at that point, just after so much violence had been inflicted, the message would have been sent that all you have to do to stop a nonviolent campaign is inflict massive violence. And so the Freedom Riders didn't stop. The violence didn't stop either. In Montgomery, the riders were savagely attacked by a mob of people with baseball bats, hammers, and chains. White women were screaming, kill them. The police stood by watching. Some men held a freedom rider down while white women clawed his face with their nails. Nash would tell you today, I didn't feel powerful. And really, what power did she have? What power did a 22-year-old black dropout from Chicago who couldn't vote have against white male governors of southern states, white male southern judges, politicians, and businessmen? <laughs>